apparently there's a feeding frenzy happening here on deck. Let's take a look. Our ship is presently in port, discharging our cargo of barley, which is meant to be processed as feed for livestock. Based on initial information, the cargo operations will take around two weeks to complete, which means we have plenty of time to carry out maintenance and complete a lot of other tasks to prepare our ship and the crew for the next voyage. On a previous episode, I have shown you a few of the jobs that we did in the engine room. It was the height of summer in a Middle Eastern country. The temperature in the engine room ranges between 42 to 45 degrees Celsius, so doing physical labor and getting down and dirty with all the grease and sludge can easily zap the energy out of anyone. During times like these, the work environment can get really intense. So it's really important to remember to take a break and don't forget to smile and keep a positive outlook. As the days went by, the cargo operations continued. On board a ship, part of our job is to carry out training on a regular basis in order to inculcate a culture of safety among the officers and crew. There is a wide range of topics which usually include best working practices, operational health and safety, risk assessment, ship security, and also consistent practice on the use of firefighting, life-saving, and other emergency equipment. All of these trainings are carried out on a schedule and can be quite repetitive. But if done properly and consistently, it can help everyone on board to perform their assigned tasks efficiently in case an actual emergency happens. While the ship is in port, it is also important to stock up on provisions to ensure that the food doesn't run out in the middle of the voyage. The crew is provided with a set budget for food supplies. The chief cook is in charge of inventory and meal planning. Ideally, he should make the requisitions while taking into account what food stock is remaining on board the menu that he has planned for the upcoming voyage, the price of the items he's planning to order, and the budget allocation for the provisions.
Upon receiving the provisions, frozen food products such as meat and fish are stored in the frozen rooms. while the fruits and vegetables are kept in the refrigerated lobby. Other items such as those intended for the slop chest, like beverages and cigarettes, are also replenished for recreational consumption. As I have made mention in previous videos, Having good food is essential for a good working environment and a harmonious relationship on board. It is a big factor in keeping the morale high. It doesn't matter if the job is difficult as long as the crew is assured that there will be delicious food to look forward to when they go to the mess hall. And speaking of food, Apparently, there's a feeding frenzy happening here on deck. Let's take a look. Woo! Apparently, in this port, the birds have gotten used to this area as their feeding ground. A massive flock of pigeons swarm into the cargo holds every day at around lunchtime, happily gorging themselves on the free food. I was curious to see how many of them are on board, so I called the watchman and asked him to make the birds fly. It's 6.30 in the morning and they just called me for standby engine. Our cargo operations are already finished and we're just going to be waiting for the pilot and we're going to be leaving port. So as initially expected, it took us a total of 14 days in port. <laughs> 14 days of discharging here in port. We don't have any news of our next port yet, but after we leave here, we will be headed towards Suez Canal. So that is the general direction or the area that we are going for. The long port stay allowed us to accomplish a lot of our maintenance tasks. While the jobs were considerably a bit more difficult, we had time on our side so the pressure was less. Plus, there's the added benefit of having fast and reliable internet access. Eventually, our ship left port and we went underway to start the new voyage. Mm -hmm.